Greetings, everyone. This is Reverend Grant from St. George's. Recently, Dominique and I were heading into the city, and we took the train, as we typically do. And um, on this particular day that we went, there were certainly other people with us. And we sat on one of those main cars just as you come in, where you don't have to go up the stairs either way. And as I said, there were other people in this car with us. But there was one particular gentleman who drew my attention. This gentleman was older, and he was sitting county quartered to us on the car. And when you first entered the car, there was no doubt in your mind you knew that he was present. You knew because he was talking to people, or, or attempting to at least. He was asking questions around what time it is, and where were we in terms of the station stops. What first struck me about him was his energy and his willingness to engage people particularly when everyone else around him just wanted to ignore him and pass him by. Out of all the folks on that car and all the questions that he asked, some more intrusive and some more innocuous, nobody responded to him. I think out of all the questions, I was the only one to respond once, which was to a simple what time it is. I also observed um, as we were on this journey that no one wanted to sit beside him. There were two open seats, but there were lots of people standing. And he would actively invite people to sit down, say there are seats here. And people completely ignored him or would walk by. The reality of what I saw was they perceived his body as something that is, that is other. They perceived his body as one that was agitated, one that was different. Perceived his body probably of a lower economic status than themselves, and certainly in how one interacts with one another, he was challenging that. It broke my heart. But I also observed a couple other things in that space. Though he was ignored and his body was robbed of its dignity in some ways, he never robbed other people of their dignity, and he never dishonored the body of another. In particular, there was one woman who was sitting next to me, and when her stop came and she stopped, stood up to leave, this gentleman knew her by name, called out to her and said, I hope you have a good day, to which she very lovingly responded to. And then it was at the next stop that I began to realize that this gentleman who was asking about the times and the stops was asking that information for a gentleman sitting right across from him. And over the course of these travelings, I overheard him speaking to him, talking about, don't worry, we'll get you onto the right train, we'll get you to where you need to go. So again, the perception in the car as people come in was this is someone who is different, someone who is challenging the status quo and makes me uncomfortable. When in reality, this gentleman was doing a very loving act of trying to help someone who was lost get to where they needed to go. It's touched in on something I've been reflecting on for a while now, which is how our faith impacts our body and how our bodies inform our faith. We as Christians don't believe or assent to um, a faith that is intellectual only. Our faith is not meant to live in our heads. It's not meant to live in our beliefs that we profess. Our faith is one of embodiment. God came into this world in bodily form in the person of Jesus to walk among us, to show us how faith is meant to be lived, which is through our words, through our actions, through our being, our bodies. It is the, the truth that we hear in Genesis when God makes our bodies from the dust of the earth and calls them good. You see, our faith is is not disconnected from the experience of our bodies. And each body experiences this world differently. Some of us have it a lot easier than others. And others, their bodies go through a lot more struggle and challenge. But wherever we find ourselves, the truth is still there, that our knowledge of God, our knowing of God, can be fully known through our bodies and through the bodies of others which is why in our baptismal covenants, we take those vows so seriously in how our bodies are meant to engage others. This Lent and this Easter, 
I invite and encourage us to reflect a little bit harder, a little bit more intentionally about how our faith is lived out in our bodies and how our bodies experience faith. Through the course of Lent, we will have that opportunity. We will have uh, our Lenten read this year as a practical Christianity, which is a starting place. It's a place to help us think about what are habits that we can tap into with our bodies that help us live out the love of Christ. Our Absalom Jones ministry and our Justice and Advocacy ministry um, separately and collectively have come together with some amazing educational opportunities where we'll have speakers coming to talk about um, the how incarceration impacts black and brown bodies. We will be watching films that help us engage what that means to, to live out lives of justice within our bodies and securing justice for other bodies. When we get into the season of Easter, we will pivot and look at how our bodies um, impact creation how creation impacts our bodies and what we eat and the impact that that has and the intersectionality between race and gender and environmentalism when we look at the environmental degradation that primarily impacts communities of color and communities in poverty. I think this is an important moment for us to reflect on that and the power of our bodies, the gifts that God has offered to us these hands that can do so many mundane things and yet can also do miraculous acts of love within the everyday. And it's in those everyday acts of love that truly can change the experience of our bodies and the bodies of those around us. So my friends, I invite you to join us this season of Lent and this season of Easter. Let us come closer to our faith, to God, and to one another in our bodies. And let us transform our faith from one of assent and belief to one of embodiment and action.